biosafety level 1 and biosafety level 2 are basic laboratories. Biosafety level 1 lab is used in basic research and academic purposes and is suitable for work involving non-pathogenic microorganisms. In BSL-1 lab, special containment equipment or special facility design is not required and work is typically conducted on open bench tops in BSL-1 lab. Now, public health clinical or hospital based labs which are which we call diagnostic and healthcare laboratories need biosafety level 2 and above so biosafety level 2 lab is suitable for work involving agents that pose moderate hazards to personnel and the environment biosafety level 2 differs from bsl1 in that Point number one in the difference, BSL-2 lab personnel have specific training in handling pathogenic agents and they are supervised by scientists competent in handling infectious agents and associated procedures. Point number two, access to biosafety level 2 lab is restricted when work is being conducted. And point number three, in BSL-2 all the procedures in which infectious aerosols or splashes may be created, they are conducted in biological safety cabinets or other physical containment equipments. Now, each lab has a code of practice. Code is a listing of the most essential laboratory practices and procedures. So code of practice means written practices and procedure for the safe laboratory operations. Each lab should adopt a safety operations manual that identifies known and potential hazards and specifies practices and procedures to eliminate or minimize such hazards. The, the international biohazard warning symbol and sign must be displayed on the doors of the rooms where microorganisms are press group two or above or higher risk groups are handled. This is the uh, uh, international biohazard sign and symbol you can see over here. Apart from this sign and symbol which, which should be displayed on the door of on the door of such labs which handle risk group two or higher risk groups microorganisms uh, other information like this admitted admittance card is also uh, should be displayed or this information should be available uh, to um, to restrict the uh, entry of the uh, people or unauthorized per, uh, people so the admittance to authorized person only means that the, 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 the information here uh, we have compiled like a biosafety level uh, uh, of the lab responsible investigator for example um, I can say that Dr. Haji Khan uh, in case of emergency to whom I should contact uh, or the person should contact the people working in the lab in case of any emergency uh, to whom they will contact. So the contact number and daytime phone number and home phone number. So authorization for entrance must be obtained from the responsible investigator which has been named here. For example, like Dr. Haji Khan. Similarly, the uh, amongst the codes of practices, only authorized uh, persons should be allowed to enter the lab working areas. Lab doors should be kept closed Children should not be authorized or allowed to enter laboratory working areas. Access to animal houses should be specially authorized. No animals should be admitted other than those involved in the work of the laboratory. Laboratory coveralls, governs or uniforms must be worn at all times for work in laboratory. Appropriate gloves must be worn for 
all procedures that may involve direct or accidental contact with blood, body fluids and other potentially infectious materials or infected animals. The gloves should be removed aseptically after use and hands must then be washed. Personal must wash their hands after handling infectious materials and animals. And before they leave the lab working area, they should wash their hands. Safety glasses, face shields or other protective devices must be worn when it is necessary to protect eyes, face and splashes. Impacting objects and sources of artificial ultraviolet radiations. Remember that wearing protective lab cloths outside the laboratory is strictly prohibited. The protective laboratory clothing that has been used in the lab must be stored in a separate lockers or cupboards. Eating or drinking, smoking, applying cosmetics, handling contact lenses, these are prohibited in the lab. It is prohibited to, to store human food or drinks anywhere in the laboratory. Pepiting by mouth must be strictly forbidden. Materials must not be placed in the mouth. Label each material properly. All technical procedures should be performed in a way that minimizes the formation of aerosols and droplets. The use of needles and syringes should be limited. They must not be used as substitutes for pipetting devices or any other purposes other than parenteral injections or separation of fluid from laboratory animals. All spills, accidental protection, uh, uh, all spills, accidents and potential exposures to infectious material must be reported to the, lab, to the lab supervisors. A written record of such accident and incidents should be maintained. A written procedure for the cleanup of all spills must be developed and followed. Contaminated liquids must be decontaminated, whether chemically or physically, before the discharge to the sanitary sewer. An effluent treatment system must be required depending on the risk uh, is, uh, assessment for the agents being handled. Written documents that were ex expected to be removed from the lab need to be protected from, from contamination. The laboratory should be kept clean. The, laborat the laboratory should be kept neat and free of materials that are not uh, pertinent to the work. Work, surface, work surfaces must be decontaminated after any spells of potent potentially dangerous material and at the end of the working day. All contaminated materials specimens and culture cultures must be decontaminated before disposal or cleaning for reuse packing and transportation must follow applicable international or national regulations when windows can be opened they should be fitted with arthropod proof screens the person who has immediate responsibility for the lab has to ensure the development and adoption of biosafety management plan and a safety or uh, and a safety or uh, the, and a safety operation manual the laboratory supervisor should ensure the provision of regular tra regular training regarding lab biosafety personnel should be advised of special hazard and required to read the safety or, or operations manual and follow standard practices and procedures. The laboratory supervisor should make sure that all personnel understand these. 
a copy of the safety or um, operation manual should be available in the laboratory. There should be an arthropod and rodent control program, appropriate medical evaluation, surveillance and treatment should be provided for all personnel in case of need and adequate medical records should be maintained. Uh, laboratory design and facilities. So, in designing a laboratory, special attention should be paid to conditions that are known to pose safety problems, such as formation of aerosols, work with large volumes or high concentration of microorganisms, overcrowding, and too much equipment, infestation with rodents and arthropods unauthorized entrance. These are the some of the problems which which, which need special attention while designing uh, a laboratory. So, the design features include uh, and the, the ample space, and the enough space must be provided for the safe conduct of laboratory work and for cleaning and maintenance. So, here you can see the ample space and the difference uh, uh, between uh, the biosafety level 2 and biosafety level 1 lab. Both the labs have ample space, enough space for uh, conduct of lab work and uh, cleaning and maintenance. Walls and ceilings, walls, ceilings and floors should be smooth, easy to clean, impermeable to liquids and resistant to chemicals and disinfectants normally used in the lab. Uh, the bench tops should be impervious means that uh, water should not enter to the bench tops or the benches, uh, the, the tops of the bench. So, the bench tops should be impervious to water and resistant to disinfections, disinfectants, acids, alkalis, organic solvents and moderate heat. Similarly, uh, proper lights should be uh, available. So, illumination should be uh, proper for all activities and open space between and under benches, cabinets and equipment should be accessible for cleaning. Like you can see here in, the, in both the labs in biosafety level 2 lab and biosafety level 1 lab that there is open space between and under the cabinets uh, uh, which is uh, accessible and easy to clean. And so, the storage space must be enough uh, for storing the materials. Additional long term storage space between uh, conveniently uh, located outside the laboratory working area should also be provided. This is generally uh, the long term storage space which is outside the lab is we, we generally designed by safety level 2 lab uh, like you can see over here in the biosafety level 2 lab there is additional uh, long term storage space or uh, cupboard or locker etc. So, facilities for storing personal items uh, should be available, the hand washing basins should be available in both the cases in biosafety level 1 and biosafety level 2. And, uh, Especially and specifically, uh, uh, the in biosafety level two, a reliable and proper uh, electricity supply and emergency lighting should be available. Proper ventilation system uh, should be uh, maintained in both of the labs. And uh, again, especially in the biosafety level two lab, first aid areas are rooms suitably equipped and readily accessible first aid should be available in, in such labs. So, this was uh, uh, about the features and designs of the uh, uh, biosafety uh, level 1 and level 2 lab. Uh, you can see um, also the, the uh, 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 another difference in the biosafety level 2 and biosafety level 1 as we earlier discussed that. Biosafety level 2 have some special equipment or containment 
like biological safety cabinet, which you can see over here in biosafety level two lab. Well, there is no special equipment or uh, physical equipment containment in biosafety level one on lab, and the work is uh, typically conducted on open bench tops here. So the biosafety level one lab personnel uh, do not need any specific or specialized training. And here in the case of biosafety level two, uh, uh, training is required how to operate in the special containment like um, biological safety cabinets etc and also as these uh, the, the uh, my, uh, her, uh, rest group 2 microorganisms uh, are handled in biosafety level 2 labs so that po they pose moderate hazard to human and environment so care should be done and uh, training should be um, uh, the, the personnel should be trained before entry to the biosafety level 2 lab which is being supervised by competent uh, scientist.